China was the first country hit by the pandemic and the first country to come out of the pandemic. Once China was able to take control of the virus it only takes time before the economy begins to return. Modern economies are driven by consumption. If the people fear for their safety going out of their homes they do not spend and therefore there is no economy. Controlling the public health situation first, is the fastest way for an economy to return. Those countries that were able to control the virus quickly suffered the least in economic terms. Many government leaders of various countries did not take the virus seriously and did not heed the advice of their public health officials, nor acted fast enough. Some followed the questionable information that came out of the US for months. It's just a flu, it will disappear in a few months, wearing face masks is only a suggestion, etc. China, and a few other countries, was able to, flatten the curve, in roughly 30 days, and their economies have begun to come back as well. China grew its GDP by 4.9% in Q3 2020 while most part of the world is still dreaming for a positive GDP growth because China got the patients under control while the other countries still have to give freedom to the virus of the patients to spread. U.S. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows on 25 October, 2020, said that the USA would not control the epidemic and that the USA would control the access to vaccines, treatments, methods, and other mitigation measures only. The Chinese mind their own business to get the pandemic under control, 11 new vaccines entered the clinical trial in China, and more projects done related to the pandemic than the other countries. The advantages of the Chinese ultra-large scale market and the advantages of complete industrial support have provided strong and continuous recovery of the industry, the government policy effects have continued to be released, and the industrial transformation and upgrading are progressing in an orderly manner in China. Emerging industries continue to grow, and continue to drive industrial transformation and upgrading. In the first three quarters, the value added of the high-tech manufacturing industry increased by 5.9% year-on-year, of which the value added of the electronics and communication equipment manufacturing, medical instrument and instrument manufacturing industries increased by 8.3% and 11.8% respectively. As of the end of September, 2020, a total of 690,000 5G base stations have been built and opened nationwide in China. From January to September, the cumulative shipment of 5G mobile phones exceeded 100 million units, and the number of 5G terminal connections currently exceeded 160 million. The potential of 5G in stabilizing investment, promoting consumption, helping upgrades, and cultivating new drivers of economic development has further emerged. At present, 5G has entered a critical stage of construction and development, and application promotion has become the current focus. The Chinese will accelerate the promotion of 5G co-construction and sharing and inter-network roaming, further enrich application scenarios, promote the launch of 5G terminals with rich categories and cost-effectiveness into the market, and open up the application channels between 5G and various industries. 5G is a wireless transmission channel, but it is also a link that connects cloud computing, big data, artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, blockchain, and the industrial Internet. It opens up the entire process of data collection, storage, transmission, processing, analysis, and decision-making. The role of data as a production factor is very important. Affected by floods, the yield of early rice in the country fell by 2.7%. However, thanks to a 6.8% increase in sown area, the output of early rice reached 54.6 billion caddies, an increase of 2.06 billion caddies or 3.9%, reversing the downward trend for many years. Autumn grain is expected to have another bumper harvest. In terms of the sown area, the Chinese government attaches great importance to grain production this year, 2020, and the local governments have increased their support for grain production. The sown area of autumn grain has increased steadily. From the standpoint of yield, since the planting of autumn grains, most of the agricultural areas of the country have relatively suitable climate conditions, and the occurrence of diseases and insect pests is relatively light, which is conducive to the growth and development of autumn grain crops and the formation of yield. Although floods and typhoons have had certain impacts on autumn grain production in parts of the south and northeast, the overall impact on autumn grain production is limited. The Chinese automobile industry continued its rapid growth trend. The growth rate in September was 16.4%, 1.6 percentage points faster than the previous month, 
the production and consumption of new energy vehicles gradually recovered from the low point at the beginning of the year, and the output growth rate rose sharply to 51.1%. The growth of trucks 36.2%, remained at a high level, the growth rate of crossover passenger cars and SUVs rose to more than 20%. The production of metal products, general equipment, and electrical machinery industries continued to accelerate, with growth rates above 12%. The electronics and special equipment industries maintained a relatively rapid growth of 8%. The high-tech manufacturing industry maintained rapid growth, and the growth of emerging products was strong. In the third quarter, the added value of high-tech manufacturing increased by 8.4% year-on-year, which was higher than the same period last year. In September, the high-tech manufacturing industry grew by 7.8%, a rebound from the previous month. Among them, medical equipment and electronic communication equipment maintained rapid growth of over 8% for six consecutive months. The growth momentum of emerging products is strong. In September, emerging smart products such as 3D printing equipment, balance vehicles, service robots, and smart watches continued to maintain a rapid growth of more than 70%. New infrastructure products such as urban rail vehicles and charging piles increased at 20%. The Chinese will have to continue to do a good job of six stabilities, implement the task of six guarantees, and deepen the reform of decentralization, regulation and service, stimulate market vitality, and release consumption in accordance with the requirements of building a domestic cycle as the main body and a new cycle pattern of domestic and international mutual promotion. The Chinese government will strengthen the endogenous power of the economy, and continue to consolidate the momentum of the steady recovery of the industrial economy. How is Chinese economy doing now? While the 4.7% growth is a measurement, we also need to understand that in a state-controlled economy growth number may not always reflect the quality of real life. It's true that there are 600 million people traveling during the holidays. Does it mean that people are all better off as the 4.7% increase tells? Would it have anything to do with the mentality to get out to have a relief? Now the government has strengthened its control over private enterprises and the status quo of private enterprises is reflected in the following aspects. 1. It is required to establish communist party organizations in private enterprises, no matter how large or small, and to accept and obey the leadership of the party under the guidance of the will of the communist party. 2. Due to the global economic downturn and shrinking, private enterprise orders have dropped sharply, many companies' livelihoods are difficult to maintain, and loans are restricted by public banks and state commercial banks, inconsistent with the state-owned enterprise loan policy, so many private enterprises, especially those small private enterprises featured in intensive handicrafts have closed down. In Zhejiang alone, nearly 100,000 private enterprises have closed down. 3. The previously implemented free market economy is now gradually turning. At present, the industries that support the lifeline of the country's economy, such as food, steel, coal, and oil, have implemented planned economic policies. Therefore, the shift in this policy has had a great impact on small and micro private enterprises. In the context of the impact of the global economic downturn on China, the government has given preferential policies to key state-owned enterprises in terms of guaranteeing the superiorities. For more private enterprises, the government's policy is self-sustaining and there is no support. In addition, private enterprises have to deal with various departments of local government as their checkpoints, it is not easy at all for private enterprises to survive. 4. Although the government encourages banks to provide discounted loans to small and micro private enterprises, in the process of operation, ordinary private enterprises can only use their own fixed assets as mortgage loans. Credit loans are impossible. Therefore, in the current economic environment, the survival of private enterprises is becoming more and more difficult. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.